everybody in Chicago, what is going on? We are here at the Far Far Cry 5 event, hanging out in the barn. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally in the barn, hanging out. It's me, Ka, it's Tanya here, and Drew. We have Drew, the lead writer on the team. Uh, give the folks at home a little bit of information about you. Uh, yeah, I, my name's Drew. I'm the lead writer on, on Far Cry 5. I've been at Ubisoft uh, for two years now. Um, came here up to Montreal. To, to start working on Far Cry 5, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Big team, uh, a lot of big narrative changes, uh, new characters and everything for Far Cry. So it's been a challenge, but it's, it's pretty rewarding so far. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, <laughs> having to get a chance to play a little bit of the game, um, even the short amount of time, you can see that the, the, the story writing is coming in really, really strong from the beginning. It seems like everyone is kind of getting their legs uh, into the world as soon as you kind of jump in. Mm -hmm. How was it kind of trying to figure out the groundwork and, and try to figure out the foundation of the story that you wanted to build in the world that you're kind of setting for everybody? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the big goal for us was to have a, a, a big, strong, bombastic opening. Um, you know, the, the pedigree of Far Cry is always uh, a, a, an opening that sort of starts mundane and quickly goes awry. Uh, you know, Voss at the, at the very beginning, you know, losing... Uh, Jason's uh, uh, brother and then and then going to Pagan Min all the, the insanity of that so for us it was you know there were there were a couple things that were known basically when I joined the team I was talking to Dan I think it was August 2015 was when I first uh, interviewed for the, for, the, for the gig and uh, he said you know the game's gonna be set in Montana we know that it's gonna be about a cult we know that there's gonna be a cult leader as, as sort of the main antagonist and he, there was, there's another thing that he said that sort of has to do with, with the ending that I don't want to spoil. Yeah. Um, but and, and it was, it was you're going to be playing a cop, and it was going to be a customizable character. So there's just a, a couple touchstones, and from there it was okay. Like, oh, what are we going to do with this? Mm -hmm. You know, what is a what is a super compelling story that sort of fits with the themes that we wanted to talk about? Um, and, and I think you know, it's it's been a big evolutionary process, um, finding the right cast and and, and really understanding what the father's message was, what he was, he was telling about, what's actually drawing these people into this cult. Um, once, you know, those pieces start to, to slot in, uh, we, 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 you know, you, you sort of start to ride that roller coaster. Um, and, and, and it, uh, <laughs> it's really loud. I'm sort of like getting distracted. Sorry about that. It's like that's uh, what editing's for. <laughs> um, uh, and, and so it, it was about how do we how do we gr grab the player right away, right? Put them in this in this situation that sort of uh, at the outset you, doesn't really maybe seem plausible, but making sure that the context all fits so that the player understands. Okay, this I, I'm cut off from society. You know, my my team is here and they need my help. And there's this cult that has has taken over everything. I've got no help and I've got to really sort of really make my way out into this world um, and, and, and save the community, save my friends, and more importantly, have a lot of fun along the way because I think, you know, with Far Cry games, it's, it's always that balance between the dark and serious story yeah. and the, the, the fun of the open world and sort of trying to figure out a way to merge that all into a really uh, cohesive experience has been one of the bigger challenges. Mm. Well, because I would think another challenge too is having this set in Montana mm -hmm. in a very real place, mm -hmm. and and the way that people responded when they saw, oh, it's a cult leader, mm -hmm. and you know this kind of Joseph, you know, self-made Jesus mm -hmm. figure. Were you surprised at the kind of backlash at, as from certain quarters as to, oh, it's a cult leader and he's a white dude, and mm -hmm. we're so angry? Well, I, I think what's interesting, you know, when we we first showed off the game, uh, it's. We didn't provide a lot of uh, context as, as far as the story, um, and, I, and I think it's having that situation, having the setting, uh, and the characters we have. It's you, you sort of you can view this game through uh, many different lenses. I think, um, and, and I think what's great now about being able to really show off the opening of the game, provide people the context of okay, here's what the story's about, here's what this cult is after, and here's what your role as the player is in it. Uh, I, I think that you know it's again for us, it was about making sure that that players you know just had a really fun time mm -hmm. um experience in this game and, and, and taking down this cult um but at the same time you know recognizing that you know it is set in montana and 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 i think you know the the production of the game you know writing it we it's we're aware of what's happening right mm -hmm. but not necessarily um losing yourself along the way in terms of we knew what the story we wanted to tell from the beginning and, and making sure that you know we were staying on the, on the same path that we wanted because uh, again at the end of the day it's it's about crafting a, a really fun experience 
one of the one of the fun things about the Far Cry series has been being able to write really good villains. Yeah. Um, how fun has it been to be able to write someone who is this over the top and, and just nuts and going all out? It's it's been great. And, and again, it, it it the character didn't really take shape until you know we found Greg. Um, yeah. It it's you know me as a writer, you know you you have an idea for what a character sort of sounds like what the cadence is in my head and I'm just sort of picking off of different actors they may have seen in the past and it, it just it doesn't really take shape until you know you get an actor who comes in uh, and just takes takes what's on the paper and, and owns it and all of a sudden you're like oh yeah that, that's the character yeah. and then you go back and you start to write these scenes and the, the, the collaboration um, working with Greg you know sending him scenes and going yeah this is great and, and, and the, his willingness to just open himself up emotionally uh, I, I think in the in the past you know far cry villains have always been sort of the the charismatic psychopath mm. uh, both Voss and, and and pagan men which were, were super fun and enjoyable but I, I think for us i wanted to sort of see if we could sort of bring that another level in of, of, of uh, the belief in what he's doing the, the commitment to which to his cause uh you know i, I sort of i mentioned to dan early on i was like you know i We've done, Far Cry's done the charismatic psychopath. I, I want to see, can we make a villain that, that, can we get a villain to cry and have mm. it be believable? And I think we have. Uh, so I, I think the emotional arc that the character goes on um, is something that people probably aren't expecting, but it's something that now that it's done, we've seen everything, we've got the process. Like, okay, I, I think we did a really good job, and I, I think people will be pleasantly surprised at sort of the, the, the shape that the, the, the villain takes this time. Nice. Um, well, in terms of the villain and, and the voice acting and them going so well together, mm -hmm. did you have a chance to, to watch or, or be in any recording sessions and kind of literally see your words come Oh, yeah, life? yeah. I was in uh, every single mocap shoot. I was there awesome. working you know, with the actors and working with the director to make sure that what my interpretation of the scene was was filtered through. David, who was directing it, and the actors, it was super collaborative. You know, sitting down, we'd start our table read, and I'd go, look, here's what we have on the page. But if it doesn't feel natural to you, if you don't, you don't feel that emotional connection, let me know, let's sit down. I'm not married to any of this. The important thing is that it feels like real people having a real conversation and we'll, we'll shape. I said, you know, if, if you've got to change a word here or there and you, you're not feeling it, go ahead. If there's something that we need to have, I'll let you know. And just making sure that they, they felt that they had the freedom to just really play around with it. Um, so for the cinematic mocap shoots, I was there. I sat through most of the audio recordings as well, just making sure that because a lot of the time I'm the only person that has a lot of the context for what's what the scene is and what we're mm -hmm. trying to do. And you know, you have so many different voice directors, and we were recording in we were recording in Vancouver, in Toronto, mm. in Montreal, in New York, like all over. The, the cast is huge. We've got like 60 named characters. It's like I think previous Far Cry days had like 10. So it, it's been a massive undertaking. Um, yeah, I, I think casting is everything. Once you find that yep. that actor that embodies it, then you can start to write towards their strengths, and it really starts to take shape. Mm -hmm. Last question before we let you go is uh, how do you figure and how do you kind of balance out when you're starting to write the story of how you want to uh, have the conversation between the gameplay team and the writing team kind of mesh and, and, and have you figured out and how you found you feel like there's a good connection between the two teams and how this particular story is going to get shared out yeah I mean that's always the biggest challenge in games right and, and it's not just us it's not just the narrative team the gameplay team you've also you're talking about the player and I, and I think that the way that the structure has changed in, in Far Cry 5 uh, it, it's so non-linear after that that opening that you guys played you, yeah. you're really allowed to go anywhere and do anything in any order and so all of a sudden you know we're as a writer you're giving up a lot of authorship in terms of the cadence of the story um, and and also kind of the tone because we've got characters that are very sort of fun and wacky and then there are ones that are more serious and, and, and tied to the, the sort of main storyline of the cult and in you know in, in a traditional sense you go oh this isn't gonna work but I think putting that into the hands of the players to say what type of experience do you want to have right um, I, I think it, it's more empowering and, and it's, it's for people who just kind of want to come home at the end of the day and, and blow off some steam if if we're forcing you into this situation that's this dark oppressive cult all the time maybe it's okay I don't want to play that where if you you pop in you're like you know what I just kind of want to go have some fun and blow shit up yeah. today with Herc or with Sharky go ahead and, and, and have that experience um, so it, it's you know the, the collaboration between the gameplay team you know it, it's always about 
fun first. Yeah. Right. So making sure that that what they want to do in terms of the core elements of the game are, are there, and making sure that for me it was it was a, a lot about you know saying okay we're going to embrace what you guys want to do, but it's just making sure that contextually everything fits together, right? And and so the open world activities and even the small side missions, yeah. everything is tied to taking down this cult. Whereas in the past, I think you you, you would have had elements that you go, I, I, I don't understand why I'm doing this quest hmm. because it, it doesn't seem like it's tied to my main mission at all. Um, even trying to figure out small ways where our, our ridiculous missions still in some way in that character's mind is tied to taking down the cult. It just makes things feel a bit more cohesive, even though the, <laughs> the sort of the, <laughs> the total scale is a, can, can sort of uh, swing back and forth a bit. Nice, nice. Drew, thank you so much for oh, coming and you. hanging out with us. Yeah. Everybody at home, I think that the story is well in hand. <laughs> I think you have nothing to worry about. Having a chance to play a little bit, I'm sure we can both say yeah. that, that things are going in a really cool direction. So, again, thank you, Drew. Oh, thanks. And everybody in Chicago, we'll see you in a little bit.